This rather neat light is a restaurant or, well, I guess, home rechargeable light from AliExpress. And it's sold for restaurants, and it's got a slight touch sensor issue here. As you can see, it's just lit up cold white. Touch it again. It goes warm white. Touch it again. It goes uh, cold and warm white. And touch it again. It goes off. Maybe it'll just re-trigger again, because it has been re-triggering all the time I've moved it anywhere near this table. I think this is sort of maybe a random field in the vicinity. But it has the, the uh, USB-C socket in the base, and then the top, it's got the large cover, and then in the middle, I think this is supposed to be the touch-sensitive bit, but it also seems to respond to the outer edge being touched, although maybe that's too large an area for a touch sensor. However, it's got an interesting quirk. Let me turn the light off and uh, show you the quirk. So I shall uh, turn it on. And uh, then I shall just tame that down a bit so you can actually see it. And if I uh, switch through, so we've got the cold white, the warm white, and the both colours. If I switch to, say, the warm white, and then I touch it and hold it, it dims down. And you can dim it up and down, but here's the interesting thing. If I touch it again, the full intent, the uh, full colour, the cold and warm white, is at full intensity off... The cold white's at full intensity, but it stores a separate memory setting for each of the colours, right? Watch your eyes, the light is coming back. So let's take this apart. The first thing that I noticed is the bottom unscrews. And it unscrews to reveal, and this is where the... Well, it kind of unscrews. This is where... Oh, it's actually just jumped thread. Oh, this is good. <laughs> That's not a great start, is it? And the, the other end is just going into full disco mode. This is an excellent product. Oh, it's actually jammed. Uh, one moment, please. Okay, uh, while well, this is just going completely nuts, I'm glad I'm not shilling this product, because uh, that would be a very embarrassing. I'd be saying, well, it's a really great product. You know, everybody should buy it. It doesn't normally do this. I'm sure the ones that you buy won't do it. So thankfully, this is a completely independent uh, teardown. Uh, if it jumps thread like it did there, it's impossible. Possible to unscrew until you've taken something heavy and smashed it back onto the right thread. Okay, now we've done that, we can see inside that there's an 18650, a sole 18650, held in place by metal washers. I'm not sure I like that. Let's unplug this. That's the uh, the LEDs at the other end unplugged. And tell you what, I'll unplug the cell as well. Because I also notice that the uh, the circuit board is just wedged against the metal surface. Hold on, let's get this out. This looks like just the power circuit board, but I don't like the fact... It's, thankfully, it's just single-sided. That's good. Because I, I was wondering, if this was double-sided, it, it could be... There's a risk that it could short against that. Okay, this is good. This is a good start. Uh, so we can reverse engineer this, although to be honest, I'm seeing what is probably a TP4056. Let me just take a look at this. They've clearly had uh, other circuitry in mind. TP4056, okay. Um, does it have the required resistors for the... I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. It, it's not got the resistors, so it wouldn't necessarily uh, charge off a smart charger. Let's Try and unscrew this now. Does it unscrew? Oh, this is better. There's a plastic. Oh, I wonder if that's why it was triggering. And does this pull right through this connector? Yes. Okay. So this is much more manageable. Now, how does this come apart? Does this unscrew? I think it does. Maybe. Oh, it is unscrewing. Very modular. This is a pile of crap, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'm sure we can do something with it. It's fabulous. Ebdy go and buy one. No. The circuit board is just wonky. It's right off center in here. The touch sensor is going up to this little metal plate at the top. Is the metal plate properly isolated? I see they've uh, got the wires running up here and they've drilled a hole in the side here where it comes through. Uh, that means I can't really get that uh, 
nut off, can I? What happens if I... Mm, right, tell you what, I'm going to have to desolder these wires and pull this out. One moment, please. Right, the wires are off. Let's unscrew this and see what else comes apart. And we'll take a closer look at this circuit board. So there is a metal washer that holds that circuit board in place. Uh, there is the antenna, just basically round the top, and this presses down on it. Uh, it was triggering to absolutely everything, though, and I think that's just purely the vicinity of the circuit board and its general ground to uh, everything. All right, tell you what, let's uh, pull off this, feed it through. That insulator, I guess, just glued in. Oh, there's glue there for the circuit board as well. And it is a single-sided circuit board again. Okay, right. Let's reverse engineer this. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore not just reverse engineering, but I've also printed a new spacer. This is the original spacer, 3 millimeters thick. I've printed a 6 millimeter thick one on the 3D printer just to see if that helps with the spacing of the touch sensor. So we start off with the... Well, I'll zoom down this, and then I'll get even closer. This is the charge circuitry. It's the circuit board at the bottom, but it turns out there is a three-pin connector facility, the place for it, for the two channels of LEDs, the warm white and the cold white, and also this connector here, which has two pins, but they're both combed together. It's a touch input. And the circuitry up at the top is emulated down here with two MOSFETs, the 700 chip, and uh, then the charging circuitry. Let me show you the circuit board closer up for the bit we're interested in, which is this area down here. So close up, in fact. I'll just zoom out just a wee tiny... No, I won't zoom out. That That's fine. So what we have here, we have a GL4056, which is a classic TP4056. Lots of different manufacturers ripping it off and just adding their own letters. It's got a 1.5K program resistor. There's a 1K resistor for the two LEDs. A uh, couple of capacitors, that's it. The ba power goes out to the battery and uh, also parallel loops to the lighting up at the top. But if the circuitry was at the bottom... It could literally just have had the touch contact at the bottom and then the uh, wiring going up to the top to LEDs. Here's a USB connector here without its uh, pins for identifying it. So smart chargers may not like this device. Let's take a look at the schematic. It's very, very simple. The bottom circuit board is literally USB in, a decoupling capacitor, uh, one resistor for the two LEDs, um, charge and standby. It's got the programming resistor on that chip, and then it's got the output with a decoupling capacitor, and then the lithium cell, lithium Li. So that puts out roughly about 4.2 volts. That's it. Let's take a look at the next circuit board, which is the circular circuit board at the top. Let me put it down this way. This has the touch sensor chip and two MOSFETs, and then it's got one common positive bus that runs around inside these LEDs. It's got the cold white LEDs. Now, it's worth mentioning they've marked them Y. That mean, usually means yellow in Chinese for the warm white, and the W would normally be the white for cold white, but they've actually got them reversed. doesn't really matter. But the LEDs are wired. There's a common bus bar for the uh, outer LEDs, the cold white ones, and then a common bus bar on the inside here for the uh, warm white ones. And each pair of LEDs has a 16 ohm resistor. So it's there's 10 sets. I think there's 10 sets. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10, 10 pairs of each colour. And then they're going back to these MOSFETs. Let me show you the circuitry down here. Oh, it's also worth mentioning they've kept so many options open. There is a place for a circuitry here. I'm not sure what that is. A different pinout from the other chip. Also, there's a three-pin connector here for actually running the effect that effectively echoes these LEDs. It might have been that that was a, the connection that went down to the bottom if they decide to have the touch sensor at the bottom. But here is the circuitry up at the top. I will just go out a little tiny bit for this. It has this mysterious 700 chip because the pinout is exactly the same as the circuit board at the bottom. And uh, we've got the power supply coming in here with the option of the connector. Loads of options. A decoupling capacitor, a position for a volt regulator is not used, but a 100 ohm resistor, 
feeding a capacitor to provide a stable supply to the little chip. It's got a little capacitor going between negative to one of the pins, which is to do the touch sensing. And then it's also got a 1K resistor on the output with this pink line going over to the touch sensor. And then it drives the A2S HB MOSFETs directly. So this is a dedicated chip just for this particular function. Let me show you the schematic. I'll have to flip the page here for the schematic. I shall zoom in. So we have the positive rail coming from the battery at the bottom, a zero volt rail, we've got the decoupling capacitor, we've got that little uh, decoupling circuit which just basically protects the microcontroller, it makes, gives it a stable supply when these LEDs are being pulsed and modulated and the voltage is fluctuating in that line a bit. Um, so this resistor limits current to charge a capacitor like a little reservoir almost like a, a thin pipe feeding that uh, reservoir capacitor so that the fluctuations are ironed out. Uh, there's the negative connection. There's the little capacitor, which I presume is for timing for the capacitor touch sensor. There's the touch sensor with the 1K resistor uh, outset to protect, presumably against electrostatic discharge, I'd guess. And then we've got the outputs to the two MOSFETs and then 10 pairs of the, the cold white LEDs with the 16 ohm resistor and 10 pairs of the warm white LEDs with 16 ohm resistor per two LEDs. That is it. So now, now, I am going to uh, put this thing back together. And it will involve putting the soldering iron and soldering stuff together. So I'll pause. But one thing I'll show you before I do that is this. This is quite nice. See how this is a elongated slot in it? When you put it in here, see the... Uh, USB slot there. When you put it in and sit it on the, these packer washers they put in and slide it out to that, it, it actually slides out into that uh, slot because it can because of that uh, groove there. And it means that the USB connector is actually flush with there because the circuit board itself is acting, uh, acting as a little sort of spacer and just buffering it to the thickness of the metal. It's quite nice. Right, I'm going to put this back together and we'll test it again. One moment, please. The device is now reassembled and is kind of behaving itself now. It still does react to the rim being touched, even though it's not technically speaking part of the touch circuit. It's just really sensitive to that. However, the main uh, touch interface now, which is raised up here, is uh, much better. I think, does that glow slightly? Oh, it does. Because I used a clear spacer, there is a bit of glow coming through the circuit board. That's quite nice. However, now I can show you as it is supposed to be. You touch it once and it comes on at cold white. You touch it again, it comes on at warm white. You touch it again, it has the intermediate white. And if you say, for instance, intermediate white, you touch and hold to dim it right down to the minimum setting where you'll be able to see all the LEDs there. When you cycle it round again, it doesn't automatically just go off if you leave a big delay. You do have to cycle through. But touch it off, it comes on at the full intensity for the uh, cold white, full intensity warm white, and then that lower intensity you set for the other colours. And you can set uh, all three of those options, the warm white, cold white, and intermediate white, uh, at any intensity setting and remember it. But that is it. Um, it's quite a nice little light. I suppose you could demonstrate this now by just base. Oh God, that is huge. That is huge. I shall put it over here and I shall turn it on to the uh, warm white setting and I shall take the exposure off and then I shall turn the light off. And you can see, there we go. That's, uh, I'll try the other setting. So that's uh, the low, uh, I'll bring that up to the full. That's the... Joint white, that's a double white, uh, that's off, that's the cold white, warm white, and the uh, intermediate white. The bench lighting is set up to sort of average about 4000K, I think, here, so that is probably the closest one matching to this. The others will look very orangey or very cold. Uh, but there we go. It works now that I've spaced that a bit better. And it's a, it's a reasonable enough design, it's a nice design, it just seems a little bit flawed in its original implementation.